What's Gucci gang? What's Gucci squad? It's your boy Young Mike back at it with another five video. And today, man, we got oh guys, calm down, man, calm down, chill, chill. I want to start off by saying I do not encourage or promote anything shown in this video. Boring. But the time I met Ron, man, the time I was chilling with Ron, I was down bad, man. I was super down bad. I didn't know what I was doing in my life, what I was doing myself. And I wasn't really up there at my prime yet, you feel me? I was still doing all the dumbest shit, like hitting licks on cars and stuff like that, and etc. And make sure y'all drop a like if y'all want to hear that, you feel me? Just drop a like, you know what I'm saying? We get 3,000 likes, I'll drop a hitting lick story time, you feel me? You know, back then we had Reggie. A lot of y'all don't know what Reggie is, man. It's pretty crazy. You talk to a youngin today, and I'm a youngin, but you talk to a youngin youngin, and they don't know what the fuck Reggie is. I was buying Nick Sacks, man, and the Nick Sack is 3.5 grams for $5. Booboo weed. I'm talking about pressed weed, brick weed, with seeds and shit and stems, and it's brown. It's nasty. You feel me? No one likes it, but when you smoke it, like, it's cool. You got three buns instead of one. Would you rather pay for, oh, $5 doesn't even get you a blunt. It gets you like a half a blunt. So at one time, I was paying for point fives, point fives, Nick Sacks, Nick Sacks, Nick Sacks every other day. If I didn't get it, it's because I didn't have it. I didn't even have $5 to my name. And I don't know how I let it get that bad, bro. I don't know how it came down to that. But all I know is this. So one day I need a Nick sack and I see Ron and I tell him what's up and he, he gets me right with a Nick sack the thing I noticed about Ron is skimps bro I have another story time about my plug skimping me man so if y'all wanna hear about plugs skimping me man I used to skimp myself so I can understand but drop a comment man if y'all wanna hear that drop a comment if y'all wanna hear whatever bro I wanna let I wanna hear what y'all wanna hear but I meet this fool he gives me 2.5 for a Nick Instead of 3.5 So instead of 3 blunts I'm getting 2 blunts You feel me And I'm like bro This shit skimpy And I ain't know I ain't know how he was rocking You feel me I didn't know who his plug was So why you selling that shit for skimpy ass shit And he'll weigh it out in front of you too He'll put 2.5 on a scale When a nick's supposed to be at least 3 grams Recently At that time Prices started going up, so the QPs used to be, I don't know, man, cheaper, and they started going up to where the only way you could make money is if you started selling them by 2.5s for a nick instead of 3.5s, and <coughs> that's what he started doing. <coughs> now, the thing about me is when I was slanging, I didn't do that. I was doing three grams for the for at least the nick, you feel me? Six grams, seven grams for the dime sacks. Nice fat dime sacks, you feel me? Nice hustle. That's how you hustle, you feel me? That's how you have your customers coming back. When you went to Ron, a nigga didn't want to go back unless you had to. So at the time when I met Ron, there was no point fives everywhere like that. Like nobody wanted to sell you a point five, bro. So I had to buy a Nick sack. And nobody wanted to sell you a Nick sack, bro. I remember being so down bad that I used to do Xanax, man. I used to be on a Nick sack with four football Xanax, bro. Like, why the fuck am I doing that to myself? But all I know is this, man. He was the only convenient person in the hood that was slanging the Nick sacks, man. That was slanging the dime sacks. Even though it was skimpy, at least he had that shit available for us. You feel me? So that being said... As he had that shit available for me, I started to notice that I was getting comfortable buying these Nick sacks from him. I was getting comfortable getting skimped out. I was getting comfortable with him being my plug and just me being down bad. So every day I'm chilling with this fool. Every day. Every day. Like this fool is basically like my brother at this point. That being said, someone that's like your bro, he talks to you about everything. You chilling, you playing games with him and... He leaving you in the house when he doing a play or something. Like, that's your that's your boy now, you feel me? So, that's my nigga. I started chilling with him a lot. And he's older than me. So, if y'all don't, don't remember, I told y'all in the beginning, I was 15, 16 years old. He was probably, like, in his 20s, man. And not, like, his early 20s. I probably think, I probably say he was probably, like, 25, 26, maybe, bro. 
maybe younger, but if he was younger, goddamn, that nigga will fuck me up right now. I'm not even gonna cat. That's why I stay strapped up. I ain't about to lose no fights, bro. You got me fucked up. Y'all can say what y'all want, but I ain't gonna be that nigga. Shits his pants. Hell no. Fuck that. So, yeah, whatever age he was, he, he could for sure be a 26-year-old and pass for that. Because that's what I thought he was. I never asked him his age. But long story short, he's coming up, you feel me? He's doing his little thing. He doesn't have a lot of money. When I was in his house, man, he had two kids and a baby mama. And he drive the Buick, man. Don't fuck with a nigga with a Buick, bro. If you see someone driving a Buick, bro, walk away. Don't talk shit to that nigga. You see that motherfucker driving a Buick, he has nothing to lose, bro. Trust me, I've seen this shit hands on, bro. So, we used to bump, we used to bump, we used to drive around in his Buick, and we used to jam the Jeezy shit, you feel me? So, just imagine the little, little young Mike, man, just thugging in, jamming the Yeezy, man, smoking on a Nick sack that I just bought, you feel me? And sometimes I wouldn't even have weed, and I'll go to his crib, and he'll smoke me out, we'll play Call of Duty. It, it was cool, man, you know? And back then... You can't ask for nothing more, man. There's someone real, someone that got your back, someone that is cool as fuck with you like that. You can't ask for more, nothing more at the time. You feel me? I remember one day he came up. He finally came up, bro. I don't know if it was income tax or what. I don't know what it was. But he had a thousand dollars in hundreds, bro. Just one thousand dollars. That's it. And he said, this is my life savings, little bro. He's like, damn. And I'm like, damn, this nigga's like 30 years old. Talking about my life sentence is $1,000. I'm 16 touching that money, you feel me? I'm 16. I, not at the time, I was broke as fuck. But before I met him, I was touching that money, you feel me? And that being said, um, Ron, he told me too, if I see $1,000 or more, bro, I don't give a fuck. He said, I'm hitting that shit. He's like, I'm taking that shit. I don't give a fuck. He's like, little bro. If I see anything more than a thousand, I'm taking that shit. And now I see me right now, and I got over a hundred grand in jury and shit. It's pretty ironic, you feel me? That I chilled around people. I'm like, hell yeah, me too, shit. And he gets this revolver. At that same time, he had this revolver. It was a 38 special revolver. Beautiful little stub nose. Little. See, we loved the revolvers back then because you could shoot something. And the bullets stay in your gun. You take that hoe home, you torch them, you fucking do whatever the fuck, but they can't find that matching up to that. Unless they find the shells, unless they find the gun, but if they can't find either, that's a perfect gun. So he ain't tell me the, the long story about how he got that gun. He told me who he got it from. And who he got it from was this meth dealer on the block. One of the biggest meth dealers on the block. Not to be fucked with, you feel me? I can't say his name because he's the one who shot my homie. So I can't say who the fuck it was. That's snitching. But he knows who it was, but he ain't tell the cops. I can't tell the cops. I can't tell nobody watching this video, so I can't say his name. But he was a big meth dealer. And um, he used to have the little niggas work for him. And these little niggas were crash dummies, bro. That niggas robbing the stores and shooting the store clerk over $300 and sitting in jail shaking and crying over attempted murder over a robbery. Where I'm going with this is that biggest meth dealer was there that night and he knew about us. We knew about him. And nobody liked Ron though. Like I told y'all, he would skimp everybody out. Nobody liked him. Nobody gave a fuck if that nigga died, okay? Nobody cared. But that was my nigga though, you feel me? So... Those, that, that biggest meth dealer on the block, I didn't give a fuck about him. I didn't like him. I didn't like how he carried himself. I didn't like how... I don't like nothing about that fool, you feel me? And I'm not no hater, bro. I just didn't like that nigga because he just always carried himself like he was better than everybody, bro. He could have just been on the meth all fucking sconked it out. But where I'm going with this is, look. He sold Ron that gun. He sold Ron that 38 special bad business, man. You don't do business with no meth dealer, bro. I don't give a fuck who you is, nigga. Like, damn. And what I mean by meth dealer is, like, you could be Walter White. That's cool. That's a, that's, that's a, not a meth dealer, you feel me? But when you are the user and the abuser, nigga, you is a meth dealer, you feel me? You is a nigga who is, I don't trust you, bro. You have all these niggas out here walking around that I don't trust. You got all these niggas coming up to us on your product, 
talking about we in his attic. Nigga, you in an apartment. You don't even have an attic. What you talking about? You had, you hear us in your attic. Where the fuck did apartments get attics, boy? So, niggas like that, bro. I'm talking, they walking us down with a gun. We had to pull out our straps on ice heads, bro. They over here trying to, just tweaking, bro. So, anyway, he was the person making these niggas tweak with his product. You tweaking yourself. I don't trust that fool. I don't, I don't do business with none of them. You know what I'm saying? So, Ron, he ain't, he ain't know, I guess. He thought he was cool. He he bought that that 38 special for $300. But he only gave him 150 So he owed him 150 So he gave him half and owed him half. One thing in the streets I could tell y'all right now, guys. Don't take no loans. Don't take no loans from no street niggas, bro. Especially if they're on meth, bro. Are you fucking stupid? Weeks go by and he doesn't pay him that 150 And one day, they start knocking on his door. They're knocking on his door, bro. Hey, you got that money? They're trying to get the gun back. They're like, bro, just give us the gun back. We're going to give you the 150 back. Just give us the gun back since you're not going to pay us the 150. Just give us the gun back and we'll give you 150. And he said, nah, I'm not giving you shit. And that's where Ron fucked up, man. This is where he became an enemy to that those people. So when he said he wasn't going to give them shit, see me when you see me. Bro, now you're talking about pride. It's more than the money now. It's the principle. So now you're playing with someone's feelings. You're playing with someone's emotions now. You feel me? So now this guy's on meth, and he's tripping and tweaking out. This is all I could imagine. You know, I'm not hearing it, but I could only imagine how it went down. And he's like, damn, this fool think I'm a bitch. I'm going to show this bitch-ass nigga I ain't no bitch. You feel me? What you got, a little revolver? That's all he got? He know that's all he got because he bought it from him and that's probably all he got. So he thinking, oh, what you got, a five-shot revolver? We're going to pull up on him with a 30 or some shit. You feel me? They, they thinking like that. We're going to pull up on him with a shoddy or some shit. Ron, beat the niggas up. And I'm talking about standing on business, though. So nobody liked him like I told y'all. Remember, he would beat niggas up. He'll skin people out. He was the bully. He was trying to debo niggas, bro. He trying to bully this meth dealer that gave him the gun out of his gun. You don't do that, brother. So, I don't care how big you are. You can't debo nobody, man. You got to be safe out here. So, he tried to debo him, and this is what happened. So, when you when you, when you try to de debo someone in the streets, it becomes a pride thing. What I mean by this is pride is more than what they're fighting for. Pride it could be an argument that you lose and you feel like you don't want to be wrong so you're very prideful. It could be not even about money. It could be about $5 and you kill somebody over $5 just because of your pride. Just because you feel like you're disrespected. You feel me? So that's how they felt. I'm ch I'm chilling with Ron not knowing this fool got a hit on his head. You feel me? I had another person across the street from Ron, right? And his name was Ray. The story of Ray, man, if y'all want to hear Ray, man, that's a funny-ass story. From a big meth dealer to down to pennies, you feel me? So if y'all want to hear that story about Ray, make sure y'all drop a like or drop a comment. Say, I want to hear that story about Ray. I want to hear the story about Robin. I want to I wanna see what I want to see. Y'all let me know. So basically, I was at Ray's house, and you just hear gunshots. Bah, 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 bah. Man, what? When I heard the gunshots, I come outside. We not too worried because we from Texas. We it's it's a normal thing. People could like bust their straps if they want it. You feel me? So we come outside just to see, you know, because it sounded close. And I don't see nothing. You feel me? I don't hear nothing, and no ambulance pull up. So I don't think nothing happened. So I'm like, huh? Okay. I'm go back inside. We smoking, whatever. We chilling. Ray's a crazy motherfucker. This motherfucker. Please tell me that y'all gonna drop a like or a comment about Ray. Cause he, I see the smoke meth out of cartridge, bro. Before cartridges were THC, and let me tell y'all, this excites me, bro. I swear to God, it excites me, bro. Cause before cartridges were THC, it was just vapes. It was just those, those vapes you put the, the vape thing in them. The juice and you just vape it. We ain't have cartridges back then, y'all. We ain't have dang vapes. We ain't have none of that shit. It was not invented yet. And if it was, it was not in the city. It was not in Texas. 
Maybe somewhere legal. But we ain't had that at all. This motherfucker was the first nigga to make a cart not smoke juice. He smoked meth out of a fucking cart. I have to cuss because this shit is crazy. He walking around the house. His eyes are glossy as fuck, man. I still remember this nigga like that. Taking blinkers of a damn meth cart. Imagine, like, that was on YouTube, like, finishing one meth cart, one gram meth cartridge in one sitting. God damn. Ugly ass boy. So, he walking around, man. He showed me my first chopper, bro. I talk about a snub nose AK 47, all black, with a cutoff in the back. Beautiful ass gun. I love that. Man, he had a motherfucking 100 round clip for that hoe. How the fuck you have a 100 round clip for that hoe? I don't even know where to get that at, man. That's a real AK. He had an AK snub nose with a damn real AK banana clip. 7,500 round clip, bro. Oh, my God. So beautiful. But So, the next day goes by, and I'm hitting up Ron, and I don't get no response. I go to his house. He's not there. And at the time, man, I'm telling you, he was serving me up, like, point fives and shit. Like, not point fives, uh, Nick Sacks. Basically, five dollars. And nobody else would really do that. And if they did, they just weren't around or some shit. I had to walk like far, like probably across the like a mile away just to go get a Nick sack. I wasn't trying to do that shit. I'd be going to Ron's house. He's in the block I'm in, so anyway, man, I go to Ron's house. He's not answering, so I'm like, damn, what the fuck? So I haven't seen him in a few days, right? I'm like, damn, this nigga. Whatever, you know, it's the block. You don't see a nigga for a few days. He just be somewhere else, you feel me? So I'm just somewhere else. And I see him walking, man. I'm like, What's up, Ron? I see some shit on his head. He had like a bandage on his head. So I see that shit on his head. I'm like, damn, what the fuck happened? You feel me? He's like, little bro. He's like, come on. So I'm coming in his house, right? And he's talking to me. It's just like a normal day, so I think. This food sale tells me he got shot in the head. And when he told me this, before I tell y'all what happens next, when he told me this, this is what I'm expecting him to say. I went to the hospital. Man, he pulls the bullets out his fucking head, bro. How you get shot in the head, you don't call the ambulance. And you pull the bullet out your fucking head yourself. Damn, this man got me hyped like a motherfucker, bro. I'm like... I couldn't believe what he said. I'm like, this man did not just tell me he pulled the bullet out of his, his head himself. There's no way somebody gets shot, goes inside, doesn't call the ambulance right away. Hell no, nah, he, didn't, he didn't do that. No, no. But instead, fuck this, fuck the ambulance, fuck CPS, fuck the cops. I'ma pull this shit out my damn self. Damn, dog, that nigga's crazy. Bro, just look at I got chills, bro. Just telling this story. Bro, I literally got chills, bro. I swear, because I'm telling you, this shit gives me chills. I seen niggas get shot before in the head. They didn't pull that shit out. These niggas were stunned. They didn't know what to do. You feel me? Niggas usually get shot. They don't know about nothing. They don't want it to risk it. This nigga did not give a fuck. He literally said, I don't give a fuck. And said, and pulled the bullet out of his head. Whoa. I seen him a few days later. He's walking around with a bandage on his head. He got a first aid kit. And he's walking around and like nothing. I couldn't believe it. That's one thing I could not believe, bro. That's why I'm telling this story right now. I've never seen nobody or heard of anybody. And imagine what the meth dealer's thinking. That, that shot him up. They shot him in the head. They got him. They think he's dead. 
And he's just walking around like 50 cent? Holy fuck. These niggas were pissed. Ron was not to be played with, bro. He was not to be played. I don't think nobody knows that story either. None of nobody on the block, bro. Nobody on the block knows that story, bro. All my homies, I never told them. I don't tell people's business like that, except right now. But shout out to Ron. That was years ago. And I think you deserve for me to tell this story because you a real nigga, bro. You skipped me out, man. This is why I stopped talking to Ron. One day, he started working at McDonald's. He found this new plug on the Doty. And this is when Doty started taking over. And Reggie stopped, stopped being a thing, you feel me? So, I started getting zips of the Doty. I came back up, you feel me? From grabbing Nick sacks of Reggie to buying zips of the Doty. And, um, I bought a zip from him at McDonald's. He used to work at McDonald's and serve people at McDonald's, bro. And he went to the restroom and pulled out, like, probably, like, two zips. And he pulls out, he just gets a handful and gives it to me in my hand and shit. Like, literally, no, he got a bag, bro. And he thinks that that's a zip. And I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll wait it out and I'll tell you if it's off. You know, I'm not going to lie. So I went home and it was off. And we're from the streets. Like, is he really going to believe me, bro, if it was off? I don't think so. And so that kind of fucked me up, man, because I felt like he was not real because he didn't give me my compensation. But at the same time, he probably was just thinking I'm... I'm capping you feel me so it was two parties to play but you should have had a scale my nigga come on so do better with that but I stopped talking to a man but Ron gosh he's the person who got shot in the head and lived to tell the story about it lived to tell nigga hey I just pulled that shit out of my head and look at me I'm chilling I'm fine I'm Gucci you know what I'm saying that's a fool that's type to say pain is temporary you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? That food is crazy. And pain is temporary, but I'm just saying, like, that food is... That food could walk on nails and... That nigga crazy, bro. I don't know how to explain it. If y'all enjoyed this video, if y'all want more story times, man, this is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to share this video, man, with your friends. Share with some people that never heard of me, man, so we could get these videos popping again. And I could get more people that want to watch these videos, bro, because... I love making these videos, bro. I love just hopping out. Even if it's just like this, a story time. We chilling, we smoking, we chilling. And I don't care, man. I, I just like doing this shit. I have a lot of stories to tell, to come, man. I can't even tell stories right now, but in years to come, I got some crazy stories, man. I'm telling you, once I'm like 30, man, oh, man, I could tell so many fucking stories. It's going to be like a whole-ass movie, bro. You know what I'm saying? But make sure y'all subscribe, man, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss no videos. It'll be, like, right here if you're watching somewhere. You know, just hit the bell, bro. Don't be a hater, bro. And just like, man. Just come on. Just like a video. More story times coming soon. I'll see y'all. Okay. That's nice. <laughs>